Mastering the passive voice with should in English. Hello everyone, and welcome back to our English language learning journey. Today, we'll explore a fundamental aspect of English grammar, the passive voice, and how it's used with the modal verb should. By the end of this video, you'll be able to understand and use the passive voice with should effectively. In English, we have two voices, active and passive. When the subject of a sentence is the doer of the action, we use the active voice. But when the subject is the receiver of the action, we use the passive voice. Active voice example. John, subject, writes, verb, the letter, object. Passive voice example. The letter, subject, is written, verb, by John, object. Why would we want to use the passive voice when the active voice seems more straightforward? Good question. The passive voice is handy when the action is more important than the doer. The doer is unknown. Or we want to avoid mentioning the doer. Example of focus on action. The letter was written. It's not important who wrote it. Example when the doer is unknown. My phone was stolen. We don't know who stole it. Now, let's see how the modal verb, should, fits into all of this. When, should, is used in a sentence, it expresses a recommendation, advice, or obligation. In the passive voice, should, is combined with, be, and the past participle form of the verb. Example, the report, subject, should be finished, verb, by Friday. In this sentence, the recommendation is that the report is to be completed by Friday, but we don't mention who should do it. And there we go, you've just explored the passive voice with should. I hope this video helped clarify this aspect of English grammar for you. Remember, mastering the passive voice will not only enrich your language but also provide you with more flexibility in expressing your thoughts. Keep practicing, and I'm sure you'll get the hang of it in no time.